Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God was crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Join me in the prayer of confession on the screen. We praise you, God, our strength and song for raising up Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, our hope and delight for answering our cries and giving us so great a salvation. Help us leave behind like empty grave clothes all those things that mire us in sin and despair. Today we embrace the endless victory of Jesus Christ over sin, death, and evil. Amen. We've heard it sung today, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to our God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If ever there was a day that you knew you were forgiven, today is that day. Be assured you are forgiven. John 20, it says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. And he says it to you today. He says it to us today. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please share that peace with one another. Welcome, everyone, to Easter worship at Hope Church. I've needed a moment to gather myself after the opening, the joy, the beauty, the proclamation that we have just experienced together. It's wonderful to come together in the beauty of this space, to see the resurrection windows unveiled, to experience the beauty of the cross as it is displayed so beautifully with the white and to see the flowers here at the front of the chancel. We're we're grateful to so many people who have poured themselves into making this Easter celebration a truly jubilant one. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to those who gave flowers outside the doors of the sanctuary is is a little brochure that just shows the people we're remembering and honoring with these flowers. It's so good to be together and we're mindful as always that many join participate fully in worship through our live stream and so we extend the blessing to you and receive the blessing that you bring by augmenting our worship from wherever you might be in the world we're grateful that God has given a mission to Hope Church to go deeper with Jesus to go wider in the kingdom and to grow closer in community. We have one announcement that we want to share today. The beginning of our Alpha course will be this Wednesday, April 3rd. It begins at six o'clock. It's a wonderful follow-up to Easter. It's a chance to come together and to enjoy a rich fellowship and a meal together and uh, to receive some teaching and then to have a chance to ask questions and just listen and hear what other people are thinking about matters of faith. We highly encourage this. We highly encourage you to bring a guest. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. And if you have any questions, Pastor Casey would love to speak with you and share with the members of the Alpha Leadership Team who could help you learn more about this rich opportunity. And with that, I invite Michaela to come forward. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Hello, checking one, two. Hello, hello. Oh, there it is. Well, uh, my name is Michaela Pankratz. I'm the minister to children and families at Hope Church. And I just want to say a special welcome to any children here. I have two invitations for you today. The first invitation is to worship with your family and stay in the pews and enjoy this worship service we have. We love it when families worship together. 
My second invitation is maybe you want to wiggle a little bit more, and that's okay. Um, we are going to be creating a fun Easter craft together um, at Kids Church, and I want to invite any fifth graders and under to come um, with us to go do that, and we'll go down there just right now. Um, but I also want to make sure that you know if you have a little one, a nursery goer, um, zero to three, we also have our nursery open for you this morning. So if any kids, fifth grade and under, want to join, Ryan is going to be over there. We're all going to go together, and um, it's okay if you don't come too. That's that's welcome. Worship together. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Logan Pankratz. I'm a covenant partner here at Hope Church and a staff as well. And I have a story to share about how God met me at an Easter worship service just like this, as he maybe has already for you. Holy Week is a special week in the church calendar year. There's really none other like it because we get to travel in time with the story of Jesus from the entry of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, right, uh, to his death and eventually his resurrection, which we're celebrating today. It gives us a chance to live into the story and kind of set ourselves into what happened. There was one year when I was in seventh grade, my family and I, we experienced stepping into that story more than we probably would have chosen. My aunt had been sick with cancer for a while, and Holy Week came, and her health took a turn for the worse. So as, as things normally go, family comes from all over to her home in those last days, and then it was Monday, Thursday, and we knew that her time was short, similar to how when Jesus with, was with his disciples at the Last Supper, he told them, my time is short, my time is coming. Good Friday came. And she started saying that she could see angels. And adults were, you know, I, I was young, right? So the adults were whispering, what is, what is she saying? What does that mean? On Good Friday, Jesus was on the cross and he looked up to heaven and was speaking to the Father, but people were confused. They were talking amongst themselves. Is he speaking with Elijah? And that day she passed away on Good Friday, just a few hours from when we might mark the death of Jesus. And then Saturday came, and I always wondered for the disciples, what was Saturday like? Well, we got to look into that. You know, we woke up with a new future in front of us. You know, she was a mom, she was a sister, she was an aunt, and where do we go from here? Eventually, the adults started to get to funeral planning, right? That's what happens next. But as a young person, I was reflecting on a week where I had seen my family have more spiritual conversations, be more prayerful than I'd ever see them before, and I was a little bit confused. If faith mattered on a week like this, does it matter every other week, every other day? And so that question stuck with me on Saturday. And then Easter Sunday came. The declaration that Jesus has risen could not have come at a better time. And if Jesus is king over death today, isn't he king over death tomorrow? Amen? How about the next day? Amen? If Jesus is king over death, then his identity as the Son of God is true. The words he said when he was with us is true. And so every day becomes a kind of Easter. That Sunday in that worship service, I decided that faith was not just something that became important at the end of one's life, that it was important every day of one's life. It was the beginning of my journey of faith, of knowing Jesus as friend and savior. I pray that that is true for you as well. So just continue to, to hear God's speaking to you today. I want to leave you with this scripture. And 1 John 5.11 says, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Amen. Join me as we enter our time of offering this morning. Um, we have 
ways that should be, come up on the screen that you can give, but we also have today a special Easter offering, and that is going to uh, our YWAM ministry, with it, which is Youth with a Mission in East Africa. So if you are interested in giving to our special Easter offering, you can write that in the memo of the check. Just say Easter offering, and they'll know what that means. Or if you're an online giver, there is a drop-down menu for you. Um, as we enter this time, let's not remember, this is an important part of our act of worship. It's a service to the Lord. And there is no better day than Easter Sunday for us to understand everything that the Lord has given to us, and we can respond by giving back to the Lord. So give today as the Lord leads. Hallelujah and praise be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy and loving God, we rejoice today that Jesus is King. He has triumphed over death, and because He lives, we live also. We lift up our hearts, we lift up our voices, and declare Jesus is alive. He has risen from the grave and there is hope for all because of this life-changing event in history. Praise God. 
we join those around the globe who cry out, he is risen. We sing with the choirs of angels, the miracle of miracles, the servant king who conquered death. The tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Even on this joyous Easter Sunday, we come with weights and burdens for ourselves, for the ones we love, for the world. We long for your Easter story to break into our families, to resurrect relationships, to bless countries at war. Show us the way of new life in you, the risen Lord. Show us the brightness of your light that leads to everlasting peace. Shine your light brightly into our lives. Fill our lonely places with your love so that we might be a light and a blessing to others. Open minds to understand your scriptures to see you as you really are, the God of love who forgives, who has given his very son for the sins of the world. We pray for people in our Hope Church community who need your touch. For Sue Raymond, as she prepares for knee surgery on Wednesday, and for Claire Vokes as she recovers from knee surgery. Bring healing and strength and be close to Katie McClure in the loss of her sister. For all who are sitting in grief today, Lord, be near. We know you are close to the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. Comfort with your peace. Remind us all that we are not alone. Help the Easter story come alive in real and fresh ways in our lives. We pause now in our minds and hearts to kneel beside the empty tomb. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way. There is hope because of you for every situation, for every person. There is hope. There is hope for me because of what you have done. Thank you, God. Thank you, risen Lord. Thank you, living spirit. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 28. If you'd like to read along with me, there are Bibles in the pew backs in front of you, or you can access it on your phone. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. 
For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. How's it going with your smartphone? (laughs) Amazing devices, aren't they? You've probably heard this before, but it's true. A modern smartphone is exponentially more powerful than the guidance computer NASA used on the Apollo 11 mission in which Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin went to the moon. Every year, smartphones get faster and more powerful. We've come to depend on them for so much, to take photos and videos, to connect to the world through social media, to watch sports and movies, to play games and read books and listen to podcasts, to send texts and emails. You can even make phone calls with them. We spend a lot of time on our smartphones. You've seen this before, haven't you? You're at some kind of gathering, maybe it's a concert or sports event, but instead of watching the action, everybody's looking down at their phones. 46% of Americans say they spend four to five hours per day on their smartphone. That seems low to me. (laughs) The average person checks their phone 58 times per day. That seems low to me. We depend on our phones for so much, which makes it hard when our smartphones don't work. This happened to one of my sons this week. This past Tuesday morning, he contacted me to say his line was suspended. Suspended? Since I am the master account holder, (laughs) I went to work. I logged into our account and I started a chat conversation. You do that when you, you know, log in, you just get the chat going and I began with, why is my son's line suspended? I was told there was a request to shut down the line since the phone has been stolen. Stolen? We have the phone. We didn't request that it would be shut down. Person says, okay, I'll restore the line. Um, I'm greatly condensing things. This took about one hour. (laughs) Wednesday morning, my son contacts me. Line suspended. I log back in, start another conversation. I'm told your phone is reported as stolen, but no worries, I'll restore the line. This won't happen again. This time it took about two hours, what I just described. Thursday morning, my son contacts me, line suspended. I log back in, start another chat conversation. By now, my good humor was beginning to wane. (laughs) But as it's Holy Week, (laughs) I was compelled to be nice. I was told, your phone is reported as stolen. (laughs) The person said, okay, I'll fix this. It won't happen again. This time, it took about three hours to to have what just happened. Friday morning, my son contacts me, line suspended. (laughs) 
I log back in, start yet another chat conversation, and told, your phone is reported as stolen. <coughs> this time I got connected to somebody who really wanted to help, <laughs> who was empathetic, who said, this shouldn't be happening to you. She spent a huge amount of time searching for a solution. We gave every bit of documentation that we could give. And eventually, she found a way. All of this took about four hours on Friday morning. By Friday night, my son had a new phone and it's working. <laughs> For most of us, Easter is a happy time. Spring is in the air, except if you live in Minnesota, <laughs> at least this year. Easter means bunny rabbits and Easter eggs and jelly beans and family meals, all of which are wonderful, but that is not the deepest, truest meaning of Easter. The deepest, truest meaning of Easter is about our confrontation with death. Easter sets before us the most profound existential question. What happens when we die? Have you given thought to that? What happens when you die? We may try to keep that question at bay, through busyness or through a thousand and one different kinds of entertainments, most of which we do on the phone, eating, drinking, and making merry. But for almost every person, there comes a day of reckoning, a moment when the question can no longer be evaded, what will happen when I die? Will I be suspended? cut off, shut down, locked out of any life to come. The glory of the Christian faith is that we have a clear answer. It is the Easter gospel, the greatest story ever told, the greatest reason ever to hope. Josh read so well the Easter gospel is given in Matthew 28, 1 through 10. At the center of this reading is the center of the Easter gospel, right there at verse 6. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Let us feel the ramifications of these simple words in Matthew 28, verse 6. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. It might help to see it standing by itself. Would you say it with me? He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Here's a first Easter blessing. Because Jesus has risen, death is defeated. Is that good news? Because Jesus has risen, death is defeated. Death does not have the final word. The victory of Jesus is not for himself only. It is for all who turn to him, all who believe in him, all who call upon him as Lord and Savior. Because he lives, we also will live, says the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Verse 19, what happens when we die? Listen to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We're not afraid to say that on this Easter Sunday there is a mystery. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. 
for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall all be changed for this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. Think of what this means for your loved ones who love the Lord. Think of what this means for you. In Matthew's Easter Gospel, two Marys are featured. Mary Magdalene, a woman of great faith and loyalty, she is the only person who is named in each of the four Gospels as being present at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene deserves our honor and praise. And then there's the other Mary. Apparently, Matthew assumed his first readers knew who this was, but it's less clear to us today, isn't it? Their world was rocked on that first Easter morning. An earthquake. The sudden appearance of an angel. The declaration of the resurrection of Jesus. A divine commission to go and tell the disciples. But none of these were the best part. The best part is told in verse 9. Behold, Jesus met them and said greetings, and they came up and took hold of his feet. See, Jesus is not a ghost. <laughs> he has a body as the risen Lord. They took hold of his feet, and they worshiped him. Jesus met them. When Jesus has risen, he does not immediately ascend to heaven. He makes himself available. He's eager for personal relationship. As the two Marys learn, to have faith means to have a meeting with Jesus. We love Easter Sunday for so many reasons, the flowers, the, the music, the joy that's just in the air today. We love having guests who are here taking all this in. Guests, and for that matter, regular members and attenders of this church who may not be quite sure what they believe or if they believe. A recent Barna survey shows that 80% of Americans believe there is a spiritual or supernatural dimension to the world. 11% don't think there is such a spiritual or supernatural dimension, but they entertain the possibility that it could be. 9% say, no, no way. There's nothing but this world. So where do you fall? Are you in the 80%? Are you in the 11%? Are you in the 9%? Whatever it is, on behalf of Hope Church, let me just say, we're so glad you're here. The Bonner Report says we live in a time of great spiritual openness. Maybe some today, even now, are feeling the tug of the Easter gospel in their heart. Because faith comes by hearing, by hearing the glorious music, by hearing the word of God read and proclaimed. Maybe for some there's a flickering of faith. Right now, you are ready to meet Jesus. For that is a second Easter blessing, a meeting with Jesus, just as the two Marys had. How do we meet Jesus today? There are many ways. God moves in mysterious ways. But one of the most dynamic ways is through the unbroken chain of testimony. The two Marys were faithful to their commission. They told the 11 disciples. The 11 disciples told many others. These many others told still many more. And on and on it has gone through the centuries until somebody has told us about their meeting with Jesus. 
I was all ears when Logan stood up. I didn't know what he was going to say. And he began by saying, I want to talk about a holy week when God met us. The Easter blessing is to have a meeting with Jesus. And now at last, we come to that little word, behold, that has animated our Lenten journey for those who have been walking with us here at Hope Church. The little word that populates so much of the Bible that means, pay attention, don't miss this. It's everywhere in Matthew's Easter Gospel. Behold, there was a great earthquake. Behold, he is going before you. Behold, Jesus met them. And it's there in our final verse at verse 10, but it's hiding just a little bit in our English translation. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. It's actually the same Greek word being used, so we could translate, and there they will behold me. This is a third Easter blessing. Actually, it's a promise. We shall behold him. We will see the Lord Jesus as he is. But this is not something that happens only in the future. It begins now. It begins when we turn our eyes away from worthless things to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. It begins as we sing to the risen Lord who has triumphed over death whose glory fills the earth, who loves us and is eager to meet us in this life and in the life to come. My dear friends, beloved in the Lord, behold our God.
joyous welcome of the Holy Spirit. I only have two words for you. The first is there are some incredible treats in the crossover cafe is the coffee and the treats are in the Portland Worship Center. And behold our God. Here's the good news. Jesus is alive. He is seated at the right hand of the throne of God right now, and he's praying for you. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Hallelujah.